Meta has been on a tear releasing more and more AI features into the ads manager. With the introduction of Advantage Shopping Campaigns, Advantage Plus Audience, and Automatic Audience Expansion, advertisers are having less and less control over their audience targeting. Meta did, however, add a nice new feature in 2024 called Audience Segments that allows you to tell Meta what your engaged audience and existing customers look like. This gives Meta's algorithm more context on your audience and also allows you to break down your results to see exactly how much retargeting your campaigns are doing. In today's video, I'm gonna answer questions like, what are audience segments? Why should we set them up? How do we set them up? I'm gonna share some examples of how to use this data to your advantage, and I'm also gonna share a word of caution that you need to hear before you set these up. So enough intros, let's get into it. So first, what are audience segments? The audience segments feature allows you to tell Meta what your engaged audience look like as well as your existing customers. As you can see here, Meta says, define your audience segments using custom audiences to receive additional insights. These settings apply to all sales campaigns in this ad account. So why should we set this up? Well, as you know, Meta Ads is a 100% data game. The more quality data that we can give to the system, the better results you're gonna get. Not only that, the more context that you can give to Meta about your audience, the more insights you're gonna be able to generate from your data. So if we take a look here, engaged audience, right? It says, these are people who are aware of your business or interacted with your products or services, but have not made a purchase. Existing customers, these are people who have purchased your products or signed up for your services. So one other thing to note, we know that Meta's latest products like Advantage Shopping Campaigns and Advantage Plus Audience tends to do a lot of retargeting automatically. From my experience, it seems like it starts with retargeting and then expands out to cold audiences. If you don't set up your audience segments, you won't know exactly how much retargeting each campaign is doing. What I found is that with Advantage Shopping Campaigns and Advantage Plus Audience, Meta tends to do whatever it wants when it comes to retargeting, even if you provide suggestions otherwise. What do I mean by that? So let me show you. So you may or may not be aware, but you can set up existing customer budget caps, okay? So you can set a maximum budget percentage to spend on your existing customers. We'll likely spend less than the percentage you've set, but we'll aim to spend no more. So let's say I had a thousand dollar a day budget and I decided, okay, I want to cap at 50%. Right? So it's only gonna spend up to $500 a day on my existing customers. So if you don't have your audience segment set up properly, it won't know what your existing customers actually look like. But one thing, I've actually found that it doesn't really matter what percentage you put in here, it kind of does the same amount of retargeting anyways. Test it for yourself, let me know if that's what you're seeing as well. But uh, yeah, I've even put zero here and I still see it does some retargeting, so. Okay, next, what custom audiences should we put inside of our engaged audience and existing customers? So what I tend to put in engaged audience is going to be basically all website visitors for the last 180 days and any custom audience that I can think of that are not purchasers, right? So adds to carts, initiate checkouts, view content, you know, the list goes on. Just basically any custom audiences that you can think of that are not purchasers. So you just don't put purchasers in here or any customer list, okay? Now for existing customers, you can see I basically just put in purchasers for the last 180 days. This is a custom audience that's dynamically pulling from my uh, Shopify integration. But if you also had a customer list, for example, in Excel or something, you can import that here. It is not explicitly clear whether or not Meta will exclude purchasers from the engaged audience. There's nowhere in the documentation that makes that clear. What do I mean? So all website visitors, right? There's gonna be some overlap with the purchasers. So it's not totally clear whether or not it's gonna count as an engaged audience or as a purchaser. I mean, logic would say it's going to count it as an existing customer, but we can't be 100% sure because Meta hasn't specified that. So there is an argument to be made that if you wanna be extra, extra careful, you can make a custom audience, for example, like all website visitors, 
for 180 days, but then exclude purchasers for 180 days. That is truly the only way to be 100% sure that Meta's not kind of double counting or counting the wrong, counting a purchaser as an engaged audience or vice versa. So to summarize, I'm putting all the custom audiences that I can think of that are not purchasers in the engaged audience. So for example, all website visitors, add to cart, initiate checkout, uh, view content, page view, top 25% by time spent, and stuff like that. If I wanna be extra careful, I'm also adding exclusions into those custom audiences. So like 180 day website visitors and excluding purchasers for 180 days. And I'll do that for each one of the custom audiences. And then for existing customers, I'm simply gonna put purchasers for the last 180 days. And I will also add in here any customer list that I have offline, say on Excel sheets or something like that. All right, you guys, now I'm gonna show you in a live ad account how we use this data to our advantage. Check this out. So here we are in a live ad account. Uh, this is a digital product. Their break even is 1x. And you can see here, we're looking at the last three days, basically. Today's the 13th. We're looking at the uh, February 10th through the 12th, okay? So you can see we have two campaigns here. Um, both are video campaigns. One's at about $1,000 a day. The other one's at about 800, okay? So you can see we've spent about $5,000 in those three days. So now, if I wanted to know how much retargeting these campaigns are doing, I can simply use the breakdown tool and break down by audience segments. So how, we, how do we do that? We go here, breakdown, and then we choose audience segments. But audience segments lives under demographics here. So you can go demographics, audience segments, and here we go, I'm sorting by amount spent. So on this campaign, you can see that the majority of the, the budget was spent on new audience, which is exactly what we want. And we can also see the ROAS of our new audience is 1.45. So it's not amazing, but it's not bad, okay? We can also see what our new customer CPA is, or cost per purchase, cost per action, right? So in this case, $67, right? So it's, it's costing us $67 to get a brand new customer to sign up for the digital product. The digital product costs $100, so you can see it's profitable. Now you can also see that we are spending a small amount on engaged audience, and our engaged audience return on ad spend is actually 3.05x, which makes sense, right? It's people that have seen the ads multiple times, but they haven't bought yet. So it, it only takes about $127 worth of spend to get those four purchases at a nice 3X ROAS, okay? And we also have a much lower cost per purchase or CPA cost per action. So that's that. And then we can also see that we're spending $26 on existing customers and no sales here. On the next campaign, you can see that out of the $2,037 spent, $1,800 was spent on a new audience. So that's exactly what we want. And we have a ROAS, a new customer ROAS of 1.57, which is profitable. We have a cost per purchase of new customers of $61, which again, profitable, right? And we can also see that it's doing, again, some retargeting here, $158 spent, five purchases at a 3X ROAS. So you can see that our engaged audience is quite profitable. So this is an argument to say, hey, maybe I should do a little bit more retargeting uh, on engagers that haven't purchased, for example. One other way that you can break down this data is you can go to geography and then country and audience segments. So if you were curious how much retargeting uh, was being done per country, you can actually see that as well. So you can see new audience United States of America took the largest percentage of our budget. Next is gonna be the United Kingdom, Australia. And then you can see we, you can see all the countries we primarily spent in. And then you can see where the retargeting comes in, the United States. So this is all very interesting data. It can drive some really, really important insights. So make sure that you're using this breakdown tool. It is invaluable. All right, next, I need to share a word of caution before you go and update these audience segments. I can't prove it, but I have a feeling that updating these audience segments actually resets the optimization of your active sales campaigns. So if you have a lot of profitable campaigns and you're thinking about updating these audience segments, I would think again, it may reset your campaigns and throw off your results. So I have an example of what I'm talking about. Check this out. 
So here's an ad account, right? This is a physical product. Their break even is around 1.5, okay? This campaign has been running for about nine months now, okay? So it's a campaign with a lot of conversion data. You can see it's spent $13,000, 244 purchases, right? And so the average return that we've been getting on this is 1.97. So it's profitable, but not, not incredible. Okay, so just to give you some more recent context, take a look at this, right? So now we're looking at January 1st through the 31st of 2025. You can see that our average ROAS at, was at 1.61, okay? But then you can also see that from the 1st through the 4th, our return on ad spend in February 2025 was 5.35x. So this thing was really, really working quite well, okay? What happened here was I noticed a glaring issue inside their audience segments, okay? They had set it up in such a way where they ha they were telling Meta that all website visitors were purchasers. So they had the custom audience, all website visitors inside their existing customer section, okay? So obviously that's a problem, right? That, that was something that honestly had to be fixed. It also had purchasers inside of their engaged audience. So it was, it was all backwards and truly, I believe it's, it was going to confuse Meta in the long run. And it was something that had to be fixed. Okay. So I went ahead and I fixed it. Um, we were running a very low budget campaign and I did not think that updating these audience segments uh, would reset anything with live campaigns. But if you look at what happens next, you can see that it, it may impact the performance of live campaigns. So I made the change on February 4th. Let's walk through the days together, okay? So the 1st of February, 9.96. The 2nd, 5.14. The 3rd, 5.05 ROAS. The 4th, 2.33 ROAS. Okay, I made the change on this day. Now let's look at the 5th. 5th, no sales. 6th, no sales. 7th, no sales. Eighth, no sales. This is very unusual, okay, guys? Ninth, no sales. Tenth, finally gets two sales. It starts to wake up, okay? Something happened, okay? I can't say for sure whether or not it was just a fluke, right? We The, the month started off really, really strong, and this is meta kind of rebalancing back down to the average ROAS, which is around two. Could be that, could just be a, you know, a bad few days in a row, or it could be that when I updated the audience segments, it reset the optimization of the campaign and messed up its results. But look now, after the 10th, 3.14, 11th, 11.34, okay? Starting to improve again. 12th, 5.24, 13th, 1.23, and then so far today, it's it's too early, no, uh, no sales yet. Actually, there is a sale on the back end, but it's not, it's not registered here yet. So look, I can't say for sure that updating those audience segments impacted the performance of that campaign, but the timing is kind of unusual, right? The day that I made that change, the next, how many days was that? One, two, three, four, five, six days. The next six days, we went without a sale, okay? Yes, our average cost per purchase is 36, right? And we had a daily budget of $50 a day. So we should, we could reasonably expect one to two sales per day, maybe, or maybe go one or two days without a sale, but six days in a row without a sale is very, very unusual. So guys, if you have profitable campaigns or you're doing really well, then I highly recommend you kind of think strategically as to when you're going to update these audience segments because you could potentially throw off your results and obviously we don't wanna do that. All right, you guys, that's it for today's video. I really appreciate you tuning in. If you wanna learn more, I really recommend you check out some of my other videos. I try to include a real live ad account example in all of my videos so you can step into the mind of somebody that's doing this all day, every day. I'd really appreciate it if you can give this a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.